All right, look at these two problems, A and B. What's different about these problems than before? Drew? There's variables, okay? What else? Come on, Drew, give me more. Uh, And a number, okay, there's a number before, okay. So I've got multiple things inside. Now, if we go back to our general idea of parentheses, when something's outside of parentheses and we bring something in, and there's multiple things inside the parentheses, what have we typically done? We distribute. So we break it up into two pieces, and that's what you're going to do here. All right, you're going to break this up, and you're going to say, oh, that's 2 squared, and that's g to the 4th squared. Now, the temptation on your homework tonight is to try to crunch all these numbers together. Be careful. All right? This 2 has to be the same size as the 4, but still above again. So you may need to be using two lines when you write that kind of stuff tonight to keep it neat. All right. You could go like that as well. All right. 2 squared is 4. G to the 4th squared. John, how did you get that? Okay, he multiplied the exponents. The temptation is sometimes we forget and you start adding. Because you're doing all this adding and multiplying. You're like, which do I do first? Group, then go from there. So, does either of these need to be written in the bottom? No. <coughs> Why not? Okay, there's nothing that has a negative exponent. Remind me to talk to you about negatives at the very end. All right, here we go. Next one. Distribute. 5 to the negative 2. X cubed. I like what Josh said before. Let's do parentheses there. To the negative 2. Someone else take me through this one. John did a good job last time. Jalan? Um, well, what do I do with that negative exponent? Where does it go? Good, it goes to the bottom. All right, 5 squared. What about this x to the third to the negative 2? Somebody else? I'm here in bottom, I'm here in top. Someone give me some reasons why. Who's willing to kind of go out on a limb? Luke. It's going to be negative what? Negative 6. Okay, this is going to be negative 6, so it goes to the bottom and becomes a positive 6. So I guess my first step might say 5 to the negative 2, x to the negative 6. Maybe that's your first step. And then both of them go to the bottom and become positive. What am I missing on the top? A 1. A one. Am I going to leave this as my answer? Probably not. Where am I going? John? Okay. And there's where we're going to stay as our final answer. So let's look up here at this example. 4x squared cubed. They cubed the 4 and they cubed the x squared. 4 times 4 times 4 is 64x to the 6th. Now, before we kind of take a break for a sec, I want to show you two different ideas. This is a problem I had the other day. How are those same and how are they different? What's the same, Drew? Uh, the exponents are both negative. The exponents on the variables are both negative, okay? So what would happen to those exponents? Where are they going to go? Okay, they both go to the bottom. All right, now what? Katie? Well, uh, I can tell you what What's different? Okay, one's negative, one's positive. Now, this is what was confusing in my last period's class yesterday. They said, if it's negative, it goes to the bottom. That's what you've taught us. And if it's positive, it stays on top. And so they all said this one was positive 5. And they all said, oh, this negative 4 should go to the bottom. Sydney, you're shaking your head no. Why? Oh, you agree with them? Where should that negative 4 go? On top or on bottom? You tell me. Give me a thumbs up if you think it should be on top. Give me a thumbs down if you think it should be on the bottom. 
I'm going to phone sideways if you don't know. I'm taking words. All right. If I told you this, as a little sidebar, if the exponent is negative, it goes down. What's the exponent on the negative 4? Two. What's the exponent on negative 4? One. One. What's the exponent on 5? One. So where does it stay? Top. On the top. So as we look at this... Exactly. This was up. When you're in China, this is up. All right. So the point being is this, guys. The only reason that you're going to move something up or down is if the exponent is negative, not the number in front, not the coefficient. And I wanted to emphasize that point because I've had a number of students who have kind of been slipping on that general little idea as we kind of look back to sections one and two. So let's not forget this kind of important idea. The exponent is where we're looking, and just the exponent. Questions? All right, open up your spirals, and let's take a look at the first problem on our home.